The ISM U.S. Manufacturing Purchasing Managers, Managers Index dropped to 49.1 last month, the lowest rating in more than three years. Joining us now for some reaction is Mark Zandi. He's the chief economist at Moody's Analytics. Mark, let me just get your reaction to the number that we got out today. Factory activity declined to the lowest level since January 2016. Well, manufacturing's in recession. Uh, that's the message from uh, falling below the 50 threshold, and it's consistent. Consistent with industrial production numbers, uh, that's output. That declined in July. It's down on a year-over-year -year basis. And a host of other indicators all suggesting the same thing. So the manufacturing base of the U.S. economy uh, is in recession, and you can connect the dots right back to the uh, trade war. Uh, the president's trade war with China is doing real damage, significant damage to the global economy, and uh, obviously to the, nation, the U.S. manufacturing base. Uh, we did get this latest round of tariffs going into effect um, on Sunday as well. I mean, you point to it. We've heard the, the, um, the narrative coming out of the manufacturing sector, certainly a, a lot of companies holding back on investment because of the uncertainty, not knowing where things are headed. Um, where does this new round of tariffs now uh, take us now? Well, I think if the president follows through on everything he has threatened uh, to do, and that, that you know, obviously September 1, but there's more tariffs that he's threatened to do come December if he follows through, and the Chinese retaliate as I would expect they would, I think the odds that the U.S. economy falls into recession next year are better than even. Uh, and clearly, if he continues to pursue the trade war, if he ups the ante, however he does that, I think uh, the likelihood of recession will continue to rise. So. Uh, you know, this is doing a significant amount of damage. The tariffs are doing a significant amount of damage, and the more he uh, puts pressure, the, the higher he raises those tariffs, the greater the damage it will do, and the recession risks will continue to rise. Uh, no, no question this latest round um, certainly hits consumers much more than the previous rounds that we've seen. What do you think all of this leads, leads the Fed? Well, the Fed is going to have to respond. It's going to have to lower rates. Uh, it's going to work really hard to try to offset the negative consequences of the trade war. It, it started, you know, cut rates in July, quarter point. Futures markets expect another three, even four quarter point rate cuts by early next year. So that would put the funds rate target down to, if, they follow, if the Fed follows through, to 1%. And I expect that's probably what they'll have to do to offset the ill effects of uh, the tariffs. Again, if the president uh, follows through and on, on, all this, on, on all that he's threatened, and that may not be enough. I mean, at some point, uh, I would suspect that investors, equity investors, bond investors are going to look at what's going on and begin to factor in the possibility that we're going to zero on the funds rate, that QE will have to be resumed. And I think that's going to make people very nervous and uh, you know, just exacerbate the recession risk. So, you know, right now, lower rates, uh, markets are taking solace in the prospects for lower rates, but there's going to come a, a point in time, an inflection point, when they're going to view a rate cut as a real problem because that means the Fed is running out of room to respond. Uh, meantime, Mark, we're, we're keeping a close watch on what's uh, happening over in the U.K. in the House of Commons, this parliamentary debate that's happening to try and prevent a no-deal Brexit. Now there's word of a potential election that could come in October as well. In terms of the, the economic impact, what do you see as the contagion effect? Um, you know, we've, we've seen the business confidence decline rapidly over uh, in the U.K. What's the impact over here in the U.S.? Well, I, I think that the, what's going on there, which now feels increasingly like, like mayhem, chaos, is just adding to a global business uncertainty. I mean, you know, as you pointed out, businesses have uh, stopped investing. Uh, investment has gone flatline, and, and uh, Brexit is a part of that. You know, the trade war predominant reason, but uh, Brexit is also uh, contributing to the uncertainty and uh, the, the fact that businesses are not going to make a big expansion decision until uh, Brexit and the trade war are settled. If uh, the British uh, figure, decide to uh, leave uh, on October 31st, that there's a no-deal Brexit, that would be a significant body blow to the global economy and probably by itself would be enough, but certainly push the European economy into recession. The European economy already is very, very close. And I think the knock-on effects to the rest of the world, including the United States, would be quite serious. And of course, the other uh, the linkages are not only through trade and uncertainty, but also through fin financial markets. And you know, clearly, uh, a no-deal Brexit would undermine equity markets, uh, cause credit spreads to gap out, cause volatility in currency markets. All of, all of that would combine, I think, to make it pretty difficult uh, for the U.S. to navigate through without going into recession. Again, in the context of this trade war.
Okay, Mark, uh, appreciate your time today. Mark Zandi joining us from Moody's, and we do want to point out we're going to continue to keep a close watch on that debate that's happening over in the House of Commons.